What's up, guys? Welcome back to another kind of funny live reaction to Cyberpunk Night City Wire. I'm Tim, Blessing, Greg, Andy. We're all here. This is great. You can watch this live on YouTube.com or twitch.tv slash kind of funny games or later on YouTube.com slash kind of funny games. Let's get into it, boys. Four seconds remaining. Blessing, oh, how many hours go. did you play this time? Oh, man. I played all the hours, man. 50 oh, hours all the hours. game. I actually wow. beat it. It's wild. Let me tell you about the ending. It's crazy. They don't believe in no fate. Every day digging the grave. Stepping up here with a stakes. City of dreams. City of dreams. Hello and welcome to episode two of Night City Wire. This is the show from Check. us at CD you. Project Red, where we talk about all things Cyberpunk 2077. Mm -hmm. In today's episode, we're going to be deep diving into Life Pass and showing you a brand new gameplay video, as well as having a chat to Philip from our quest team. Then we're going behind the scenes and taking a look at how I refused to bringing the band Samurai to life. And then oh we're God. showing you another oh new God. gameplay video yes, and right. having a chat to Pavel, our senior gameplay designer, about just some of the tools of destruction that will be at your disposal in Night City. So let's get <laughs> started. Street Kid, Nomad, or Corpo? Which will you pick first? Corporate. I'm ready to decide. I did Corpo during my demo, and made me think that I might go Street Kid or Nomad instead. You were raised in the streets, right? Where exactly. People to go out and meet me in the exactly. streets. Exactly. You say. Meet me in the streets. <laughs> <laughs> Look how cool Corvo well, is. Who do we have here? Corvo is pretty cool. Grew up in Haywood. But like, whole street was my imagine family. being a kid. In in the the street. Street. Neighbors helped each other out. Thought nothing of it. I am pleased to see you have not forgotten your roots. Born here, live here, die here. Childhood memories, hopping buildings, running away from badges, iron taste of blood from a split lip. Ugh. Ugh. Motherfucker! Got everybody fighting for a slice of the street. Get the fuck out of Vista. If you keep getting jumped, you find some stronger tubers. Do you want to spend I just don't get how this game's gonna maintain gaps. Or become the origin overnight. Have a ride. The main all you know is fucking question mark blocks and mushrooms. Right? Yeah, exactly. come on. Got him, Andy. <laughs> Got him, it. Got him, dude. It's just like, how is it possible? Like this level of racing my barber so for the first time through the hills. That's CD Projekt Red, brother. <laughs> oh, and uh, the first the kiss in the middle of a synth cornfield. A we synth nomads corn. choose who to make our family. A choice forges strong bonds and a higher duty that stands solid as an old oak. This is like some Fast and Furious shit for you, Tim. <laughs> My family's Dude, I was gonna say, pieces. Just That's why I'm headed for Night City. <laughs> Be so it makes you an outcast Country boys. outcasts. Miss this, you know? Race wars. Camarado. I know. I saw it in your heart the first time we met. You know what I always liked about nomads? Your taste, no, hunger for freedom. Not easy to come by in Night City. Corpse got their grubby claws and everything. Why would I want to be these dicks? You know what I mean? Out in the exactly. sticks. It's hot, you're sweaty all the time. Look at you. Yeah. Here one. we go, here's what I want to be. They were supposed to be ready yesterday. The world's going to tear us apart when the word gets around. The world's never going to find out. If I go down, you're going down with me. No, I'm not fucking joking. This isn't a request, V. But no way you're fucked, right? You're the one who fixes other people's shit. If you work an hour soccer counter intel, you're always <laughs> fucked. Today, they got you to zero somebody. Tomorrow, they'll get somebody else to zero you. What's the rules, Jack? Want to be top? Gotta have some skin in the game. Yeah, but you're not on top. The borough Arasaka is. And you're the pendejo who keeps him there. Work for yourself, live for yourself. That's the only way. Edward James almost. Well, corporate didn't seem that fun at all. <laughs> Cor <laughs> Corpo didn't seem like a fun life. <laughs> that did. See, I thought that looked awesome. 
all three of those to me sold me so in a way that I was like, I'm obviously it's street kid. And then I look at them like, I don't know. You about cyberpunk. Yeah, Nomad has so like I a think Portland, for today, we'll into. start with a question that everybody wants to know. How does the path you pick affect your time in Night City? It actually it affects your time quite a lot throughout the whole game, but let's start <laughs> the at the first beginning, two hours. because basically our game has three different it's, starts it's depending on your dry, linear path. adventure. Uh, <laughs> as an example, if you choose the street kid life path, you have lived most of your time in Night City. You know the streets, you know the gangs, you know the slang, you kind of know what's going on in the, let's say, lower life aspects of the city, which can of course give you lots of good opportunities also later on in the game. Uh, but if you start as a nomad, you actually used to be part of a nomad clan and a nomad family, because nomads that roam the deserts around Night City that we call the Badlands actually value their family above anything. But for one reason or another, you actually <laughs> left that totally. family behind. And now the beginning of the game for you will actually be how to get into Night City and how to make a new life there. Then you can also choose to actually be a corpo and choose the corporate life path. This really, these really are and like the three different characters you're not at from home GTA the streets 5. of Night City or in <laughs> like the desert of the Badlands, but actually sure. inside the boardroom because you rose the corporate ladder of the Arasaka Corporation, Damn, I don't which have a basically here. gives you the ability to sometimes, you know, read Just between the lines, it. read people when they're trying to do business, which of course can give you many nice opportunities later on. So this isn't just about the start of the game. Can you maybe help people understand how this translates into the gameplay? Yeah, so the thing is, we make Cyberpunk a real RPG. And part of left. that is that oh, you you're can right. play your letters. character from the well, start right back. to the end. And of course, you know, we have these life paths affecting the beginning of the game, but Kyle we want to make it hit, so no linger, you have your life path do the Macarena, no problem. throughout the whole <laughs> game until the, the game is over. And as an example, we do that by giving you additional options and dialogues. So I can give you one specific example. And this is a mission where you have to steal a flathead robot from the Maelstrom gang. Basically, those Maelstromers stole that flathead before from a corporate transport. And the owner of that corporate transport, Meredith Stout, wants you to do something else. And this is an optional objective. And even within that objective, we want to give you some options. So as an example, if you have a corporate life path, you basically know what Meredith Stout is really about. You can read between the lines and you can get some additional options that maybe actually later enable you to do a completely different thing with the Maelstrom gang. And if you're a nomad, you know exactly some more details about how these Maelstromers would have even been able to steal a robot like that from Meredith Stout, who's part of the very powerful Militech Corporation. As a street kid, we, as an example, don't give you a specific new dialogue option in that dialogue, because as a street kid, you do not have a lot of experience dealing with higher up people like Meredith Stout. But we want to give you additional options that fit your life path very well. So later, when you actually talk hey, to the Maelstrom gang, doobie with me? one member of the <laughs> yeah. gang offers to you with. I won't smoke a doobie with you. <laughs> but as a street <laughs> kid, you actually me, know what this is about. You can talk <laughs> exactly, some stuff with dude. him. And that might actually make that character like you a little bit more. So Philip, I do have a couple of extra questions for you based on the video we just saw. And the first is about nomads. So the nomad life path, this starts in a place called the Badlands. Is this somewhere you get to visit even if you don't pick nomad to start with? Uh, yes, absolutely. So the thing is, Night City is surrounded by this huge landscape that we call the Badlands. And you can go there whenever you want. So as an example, if you actually do play the nomad life path at the start and you are in the Badlands, you can even see Night City on the horizon. And we want to give you the option later in the game, if you want, you can just take your car and drive out of the city. You can go there whenever you want. Thing is, you might not want to because the Badlands can be a pretty dangerous place at first because time has not been very kind to the Badlands. There have been many wars in the past. There's global warming. So most people that do live out there don't really have Just another choice about it or are nomads that love this life and are all about it and are very battle hardened. We, of course, also want to tell their stories because we want to tell many, Just many Mexico? different stories throughout the cyberpunk like, genre, like border, which means that like you a... will also find missions that lead you out There's in the everywhere. There's or where you everywhere. deal with the borders people living gotcha. there. <laughs> so Philip, can you tell us a little bit more about the character Padre? He's the guy we see giving his business card to Street Kid V in the video. Yeah, Who is this man? Yeah, so Padre is actually one of the fixers in Night City. And fixers are people that work as intermediaries. 
So if someone who has a lot of money needs a problem solved, they go to a fixer. And a fixer then finds people who can solve that problem. And these people are people like you, V, cyberpunks. Fixers are very territorial. So Padre specifically works from Haywood, which is where you as a street kid grew up in. So you already know him. You might have already seen another one of our fixers who is called Dexter Deshawn. And I he works McDonald's in a different part Haywood. of the city. Yeah. So specifically Padre, you, you might know him as a street kid, but even if you played other life paths, you might sooner or later think that he's operating in Haywood, which is a pretty big place with a pretty good job. So if you want to make some cash there, you will sooner or later deal with Padre. You should have said Philip, thank you so much for joining us. Now on my first playthrough, pretty sure I'm going to be picking Nomad. But for those watching, we would love to know what you'll be picking. So have a think about it and send us a tweet. Don't forget that later in this episode, we're going to be showing you another new gameplay video and having a chat to Pavel, our senior gameplay designer about just some of the tools like of destruction will be at your disposal in Night City. But before Why? that, let's talk about... Because, I, I mean, this is the, the, things, the questions that I want to answer, as opposed to, life. hey, check out now, this weird-ass VR we're thing. Gonna talk about things <laughs> like the least you don't want to be Dave has ever shown. <laughs> Yeah. But today, we're going to take a look behind the scenes at how refused to bringing Johnny Silverhand's band, Samurai, to life. I wouldn't write these lyrics for myself. In our willing, yes to be Fuck yeah, so let's kind go of to Spotify, to, to get into like, the mindset of who is this character and what would they write about, or what, what, what's their agenda. It's interesting to to try to like catch a language that that's his and try to catch a language that's God, like so cool. part of this game. It's so <laughs> cool. It lost me with the song. I was really in for a second. Crazy thing is that that is actually Keanu singing. There is a reason why we're here. <laughs> It was pure for For a second, I was like, is this the game? Band. He knew the music, he knew the voice, and he's like, oh, that's a perfect voice for, for Johnny. Ah, studio life, guys. And that they wanted, it, I know. guess, a sound yeah, let's of go back. contemporary let's go back. when Johnny's supposed to have had the band. Back when me and Bless were in my band. <laughs> the <establishment laughs> kind of guy. Gonna drag a corporal rat on stage. Make him kneel, douse him with gas, and light him up. So of course there are things that you can relate to, and like Sounds just good. like this outcast and this rebel. But I'm a corpo. Like the, the corpo is, and that's definitely something that's been a oh part God. of my life and a part of the future. <laughs> Could you imagine? Came out of You're not going hard like enough. I said the fucking party. <laughs> So I, I think it makes sense. I think it totally makes sense for us to be here making these songs about him or for him. You know, so it's pretty cool. Yeah. No, 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 just going all in. So we're, we really worked on these songs, trying to make them as good as possible. But then they're not what are you actually doing here? our songs. It's interesting as, <laughs> as a musician to I play I totally jinxed it, guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> we're, I mean, we're not here as This is the detective region for this presentation. And I'm here with Johnny <laughs> Silverman, you know? So it's like the voice we're representing here is someone else. We'll never fade away! It's uh, been Listening to people sing stuff like that, like out of context with no other instruments, is always hilarious. Yeah. And it never won't be, Andy. I don't care how many times you talk to me about Rick Ashley or how many times you talk about Rick Ashley. <laughs> Rick Ashley, <laughs> John, or Edward Scissorhands, all right? It's always going to be funny. Dude, last week, Gia got Rickroll, and she didn't know what a Rickroll was. And me and Joey oh were laughing at her so hard, and she was getting so upset, and I was trying to explain it to her. And it's a hard thing to explain if you have <laughs> I mean, the no understanding. It's just like second nature to me, because I've been, I've been doing this for a very long time. But then when someone comes in and says, I'm happy with everything except for Azza Lim. Again, it's Azza. 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 It's fucking Azza! There's always okay. a Tim of the group, Shout you know what I mean? Great. 
but think of that accent or think of that like enunciation. It's a bit weird because it is a, it's a very different way of singing when, you, when you're screaming like that and it's hard to sort of... Swallowing some syllables there. Adjust your accent. Oh yeah, just person. try it again. So it's, it's been a bit kind of frustrating. <laughs> oh yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't... put it on the throat, baby. Come on, guys, this is where the, it's the big leagues now. It wasn't horrible, it wasn't, it wasn't great. But I mean, I get it. I mean, we, we have to maintain the illusion that this character that's a character of the game also is, is me. Cotton says, like when this I'm is singing. futuristic so music, it makes so sense. let's go yeah, back. It's, it's a bit <laughs> different to have someone <laughs> telling you exactly how to I'll be Corpo just so I can never go into these clubs. Usually people music. are just like, give me a thumbs up, and then like, you know, you, you think the things like the rhythm, and you think about the pitch, and you think about all these things, but then someone comes in and like, that word sounded weird. I'm like, what? No, it's, it's how I sing. But so it's, it's been a very, uh, yeah, a bit painful <laughs> at times. But it's all right. See this song, I'm chipping in. Roll Rick the Ashley. Pulse, I'm yeah. chipping in. <laughs> <laughs> the man himself stepping up to the mic to fucking play. <laughs> I respect this kind of music. It's a very interesting. <laughs> I don't like it, and I don't listen to it, but I respect as it. As a person that's not a gamer, I don't think I fully understand the impact that this might have. If people like these songs and if people are excited, that, then that's going to be great. I mean, we, we are spending a lot of time. I think we're future trying to band get this that's right, like trying to get it to sound like, you know, like samurai <laughs> would sound, you know. So it's, it's, it's quite interesting. It's a very different way of, uh, of, uh, of, of making music, actually. You can already find three samurai no, tracks available on, on the streaming services. Underground Chippin new in, noise. Never Fade Away, and The Ballad of Buck Gravers. <laughs> but we're excited to announce no, a fourth new song called A Like Supreme, which is coming to streaming services <laughs> nope, today. Totally that means you can check it out once the show is over. Don't forget that if you're tuning in late, or if you just want to watch anything again, we will be uploading everything to our channel soon. Next up, Pavel and I are going to introduce you to some creative ways that you can solve problems in Night City. Oh no, wait, I was right, sorry. <laughs> and Need for Speed 2005, or 2015. Big time bad. <laughs> AV, I have a job for you. A client of mine is making an arms deal. He needs protection. It could get hot, very hot. The presentation the is just off the Milstrom. fucking chain, man. Alas, nothing ever transpires as planned with them. You better gear up for this. Like, this reminds yeah, me of the beginning of, of Doom Eternal, where you're just like, oh, I guess we're fucking things up now. Yeah, I guess we're doing this. I can't wait to shoot stuff in the <laughs> Like, I'm down with the RPG stuff, but just give me a gun. <laughs> How about a power weapon? Oh, I love a power weapon. With some graffiti on it, custom made by Cool Greg. Can you imagine? Yeah, like, this, the style of this game is probably the one thing I can't get over, you know, after demoing it. What do you mean? It's ruining other game streams? No, it's just like... That's what you think it about has, when you think about this game. Yeah, like that's that's the thing that I keep coming back to. You. Like it, right. uh, one is the choice, and like the, the amount of RPG that's in this RPG. But then also looking at it, I think I described it during as this during our preview. But like the gra like graphically, it's not the most like the, the textures aren't the cleanest. Sure, it's not sure, like sure. the most like you know technically powerful game I've seen from like a graphical sense, but. Stylistically, like, I mean, we see all what we're seeing here, right? Like, there's so yeah. much going on in the art of it that gives the game so much life. So, like, you get it. fucking gorilla arms, you get that gorilla grip, you know? Mm -hmm. What I am having, um, one thing I am excited Sorry. about is that I know that Blessing did stream. Are you winning? And so, yeah. I think yeah, yeah, yeah. when you see yeah. it natively, I I'm think in. it'll be even more impressive. Yeah, probably, yeah. Pavel, thank you so much for joining me. Now, there was an awful lot in that video, right? Because there's more than just guns. Absolutely. We have 
melee weapons, we have ranged weapons, we have cyberware, we have offensive cyberware, defensive cyberware, armor. We could talk for hours and hours about this stuff. I think just for today's episode, we should keep it simple. Jeffy and Grub let's Grub just talk about energy. guns. Jeffy Grub Grub in the chat says uh, we're all thinking. I would be so afraid I would rip my genitals so off while playing with myself if I had robot gorilla arms. Power weapons, we have tech weapons, and we have smart that's, that's weapons. That's what I'm saying with that gorilla. Power weapons but are the most robot similar genital contemporary you. weapons. Oh, One thing they can do, which no Wait, what? They jerk themselves? They can hit somebody hiding behind cover or hiding behind the wall. Now, tech weapons, on the other hand, use electromagnetic power to propel a fully metal projectile to extreme velocities. What that allows it's them to do is Night to City, punch babe. through cover or punch through walls to hit somebody <laughs> who's not even aware that you're there. Smart weapons use guided missile technology to actually One thing track I love is that I gotta assume that there were... Time. So you can There's hit a team of animators only dodging, working on running away from you, or you can hit somebody who's hiding behind cover. Andy, I've so been rewatching Sugar Pine just Seven, contain FPS and he okay. looks like Steven Subtick. He does. He does. Oh, yeah. so he does. Tell us how <laughs> he looks like Steven Subtick and Logic had a baby. Those RPG elements <laughs> into gunplay. So I can tell you one thing, Holly. It wasn't easy to merge those two elements <laughs> together. Now, uh, we spent a considerable amount of time merging <laughs> the RPG and FPP side of our game. What the player will experience is that V changes from a small-time mercenary to a legend in the world of Night City. V becomes more and more proficient in using weapons as oh the game God. progresses. So they will see that reload times become shorter, uh, the accuracy of your weapons grows, uh, you will have faster aiming time, you will move faster with your weapons. Everything becomes more in your I control and that about, gives like, you I'm so more opportunities to defeat the biggest encounters that we've designed for you. Like the guys with so the I have prepared a few faces, extra you know? questions mm -hmm. oh, for you. Okay, well the first is going to be, how do you find more weapons in Night City? Like, where will players be looking for them? So, I expect the players to look everywhere for new and exciting weapons. You can, of course, buy weapons at vendor shops and they will house an entire Dude, I still need to finish of uh, that you can get. Now that you said that, However, Andy. the best weapons that you can find <laughs> yeah. will I got, be like, taken I, from uh, enemies to, like, or why do you say that like that Solid Snake or in Night City. The <laughs> weapons <laughs> rarities <laughs> range from <laughs> common Ash to uncommon <laughs> up to Dude, rare I fucking and love legendary. Ash Chain. And as they go in rarity, they actually climb in power. I still bump the However, soundtrack. Legendary Dude, weapons the are very police station soundtrack. In such a way that like the only time I ever want to be in a police station. Unique abilities that you will find <laughs> no other weapons in the game. The players will actually need to make some tough choices to find some legendary weapons because maybe they need to choose whether to kill a person who holds the legendary weapons that they want or to spare them because they like them as a character. So next question, let's talk about weapon modifications. What mods can people give to their weapons in Night City? So we have two types of modifications in the There's game. The masturbation One of them mod, would like, be see you guys, I told modifications you. <laughs> that we call attachments. So these would be scopes and silencers, and you can see them actually being attached to your weapon as you're playing the game. They there give you, you statistics you advantage, oh and they God. give you more opportunities in game. Love when my gear the other reflects part how of I look. mods would be software mods. Now these are basically small chips that you install in the in your weapon, and they actually change the statistics of the gun. They can give you damage, they can give you accuracy, or they can give you more fire rate. Some of those mods actually change the gunplay on a more fundamental level, so they can give you non-lethal rounds, biochemical rounds, to tear through that armor even that. faster. So I suppose for my final question, uh, why don't you tell us about your favorite weapon then? Which I is vote your favorite that we say weapon so far I like the way you pronounce it. Oh, yeah, I, I like it too. So many no more weapons accuracy. that it's hard to choose now. just one. Accuracy. But I can accuracy. mention some manufacturers with their weapons that I absolutely adore. The first manufacturer would be Tsunami Defense Systems, who produces the sniper That's rifle Nekomata. That's a lot of Borderlands vibes That's a with tech the guns, sniper which rifle. I appreciate. That means that it can pierce through walls. So it can actually hit like the somebody brands. who's hiding behind yeah. cover or who doesn't even know you're there. <clears throat> of course, I also ketchup. like a close quarters approach. And what that needs is a shotgun. One of the shotguns that we have in the game is Budget Arms Carnage. Now that thing is cast cool from name. pure steel and it weighs a ton. However, you can cut a person clean in half with it. 
Another shotgun that I absolutely love, it's for a more refined approach, I would say, is a smart shotgun, Kang Tao Zhuo. That thing has eight barrels, and that means it can Dude, track I mean, eight targets independently. Now, killing an entire room was never simpler. Uh, Pavel, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for having me. Uh, I'm actually pretty interested to see what kind of weapons people discover when they uh, play cyberpunk for themselves. Before we end episode two, this is a reminder that those who wish to dive deeper into a lore can now pick up the world of cyberpunk 2077. This is a brand new book created in collaboration with Dark Horse Books that will give you an extensive look at what makes Night City tick before jumping into the game this November. That is it for today's episode. Thank you so much for joining us. Don't forget that if you've missed anything or if you just want to watch again, we will be uploading everything to our channels shortly. Thank you so much for tuning in and we'll be back with Night City Wire episode three soon. Let's watch that shit in 4K again, baby. I want to see that guy <laughs> scream. <laughs> see yeah. all, those, all those doodads and whistles yeah. and things on the oh, shotgun yeah. turning around. Uh, I was talking about the band. I know you're talking about what I was, I was talking about. The gun. I want that background. I love this animating background. That's what I, I want. With the lines back there? I just love all that cool shit. CD Projekt Red, if you're watching, email that to Andy. Yeah, please. please. Like, and Andy, I'll change it on my color scheme. Don't you have the skills to like do that? Maybe. Kevin, don't you have like a lot the of skills? Work. Yeah, don't you have the skills to make your own sandwich? But sometimes you go out and you buy a sandwich, don't you? That's a good no, point. No, never. It's a very good point. <laughs> never bought my own sandwich. So I, I I enjoyed that Night City Wire. I do think that after the talking about the three different paths, it kind of was just like, all right, now it's here a bunch of shit that nobody really cares about. Like I this could have all been one giant Night City Wire, <laughs> you know, like oh, yeah, all totally. of the things together, and and that may, means that all the like second the back halves of these so far would be much tighter, shorter segments. But I enjoyed that first half a lot, and I, I thought I was interested in what could make me care about like the badlands which that's never been my aesthetic at all like borderlands never did it for me like just the look of it and like Rage the deserts too. and stuff yeah i'm like i don't i don't want this at all and i'm still not going to pick that uh going into this one but this was the most i was ever sold on it i obviously love like the fast and furious inspired shit got they got going on uh both with like the actual racing stuff and just kind of like the vibe but what i really liked about it the was Diesel. the night city in the background like there's just something mm -hmm. yeah, so yeah. cool about it just kind of looming over there like it it grounds the badlands a bit more for me where i was like I'm, I'm actually excited to explore out there and see what's going on but uh now I, i'm so torn between corpo and street kid right now honestly street kid sounded cool the coolest i think as somebody who wanted to be corpo i think just from the jump and i still might be street kid sounds like the coolest thing of you know, having the lingo, but knowing the streets kind of thing, like in a corpo, if I'm just going to be part of this stupid corporation, another cog in the machine, Andy, then yeah. do I really want to be able to talk to Meredith Baxter Burney or whatever her name was? I don't know. <laughs> Baxter Burney. So bless you. You played more. I mean, you played more than any of us, um, mm -hmm. meaning any. Um, I'm interested in there's there's like subgroups that they've put on the posters because originally when there was like the six posters or whatever, there was more than just the Nomad, Street Kid, and Corpo, right? Like, because there was a... I remember there was one that was like, it's not fashion over function, but it might as well have said that, where it was kind of like a mix between Corpo and Street Kid. Interesting. No, well, I that might you might be like uh, bringing in some more stuff that like is, out, is outside those three life paths. Because like they they very much, when I played it, focused on, okay, yeah, you can... Essentially, you can choose between the Street Kid, Corpo, or Nomad, and that'll pretty much affect how your game starts off and then also like dialogue options and how you're able to operate and so like for me uh when i played as corpo right like i i i, I enjoyed it fine i think the thing that i realized was for me as somebody who who played a lot of deus ex i found a lot of sim similarities between uh playing i forget his name like adam jensen or whatever in that yeah, right. and in playing the corpo in cyberpunk where it's like oh yeah this is like a lot of like you know my character knows people. My character is, is is talking in a sort of way where I'm like, all right, yeah, you know things. Um, but street <laughs> street kid feels like it, it might be more down to earth in terms of, uh, you know, you you actually being in the thick of it and you actually like being involved with the street level stuff that just appeals more more to me than the actual corpo stuff. But there's like a lot of style when you talk about like fashion or function or and, and all that stuff. I think that that applies more so to the different like 
different lifestyles in the game's lore. And so you have like the, the military stuff, which is like, okay, yeah, the military stuff is very fashionable, but also it's 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 meant to be more function functional uh mm. than fashionable. Whereas you get like the Arisaka stuff, which is the 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 corporation in the game that you work for, that you get exiled from in the beginning. And that is more like, oh yeah, this is this is the high life. This is uh you know big business big corporation you're you know operating behind the scenes in a way that is like really cool and really like underground but you you have all the power right like that stuff is more so to to fill in the world and fill in the gaps rather than like the actual uh life paths andy what, what yeah, you about to say? so the uh the, the four different posters that they came out with were yeah like bless is saying sort of like your lifestyle and your aesthetic um necessity over style uh is the one that looks like you know you don't come from a lot of money um you have you know there's like a little work a worker's vehicle behind you kind of looking like i don't know you're almost an uber driver of some sort there's a dude uh dude barbecue and there's a girl with like a little hoodie on or whatever but uh, what you're talking about tim is style style over substance um and mm -hmm. that is uh where everybody's got the cool neon looking jackets and you're oh, yeah. in the streets but and you ride like a cool car and shit and there's substance over style is the more military uh militarized one where everything's super like it, you're all wearing like mad black everything and it, it yeah. looks very very uh it looks very control like um and then style and substance uh, is a mixture of both and the little woman uh, this woman has a little uh little leopard with her so oh, you get a leopard no. you get a leopard in the game so that's that's you're exactly that is what i'm talking about but i remember there was names tied to it too oh yeah, yeah. So like I, I, the entropism is the look of poverty that derives from humans grappling with yes. struggling against technology uh there's kitsch which is which is uh the look of a long lost golden age of people entirely unwilling or unable to forget it it's black it's flashy bold and usually cheap and that's the style over substance substance over style is neo-militarism the look of yes. global conflict and corporations jockeying for power cold right. sharp and modern and then there's neo kitsch which is style and substance the one woman with the jaguar we get and it says uh, the look of infinite wealth and vanity synonymous with luxury it has been blossoming among night city's wealthiest elites those who can afford to buy anything who can afford who can afford to be anything they want to be Oh, yeah. I'm going Neo Kitsch, baby. Let's and fucking that, go. I want a that, leopard. That's, that's pretty much what I what I'm like referencing. What I'm saying, like the it's the style of the game that really stuck with me more so than anything else coming out of it because it seems like they put a lot of thought into these different types of styles, these different types of lifestyles that feed more into the lore of the world and feed more into like like you are you're going to experience you're going to experience all those things. Like you're going to experience the kiss. You're going to experience the neo neo uh, militarism because basically the the game is going to take you through i imagine the game is going to take you through uh interacting with people from these different lifestyles right and i imagine that like depending on what your life path is you'll probably start off with like the um i can't remember the exact names of them but like you'll you'll start off start off with like the the ultra rich stuff if you're a corpo for example or you'll start you'll, you'll start off with maybe some of the neo-militaristic stuff also if you're a corpo um uh and like you'll probably you'll probably feed feed through all of those in some way um and like it it's it's insane how much thought and like care it, it's they seem to have in terms of filling out the world and making everything feel uh real in a certain way or making everything feel like it has lore and meaning behind it i think what i think tim when you said my main concern is how can this level of qualities be you know be consistent all the way through this giant open world and how and how long will we eventually see like a drop in quality or whatever i mean i think i think the fact that this game you know we first heard of it in 2013 right i i just think that they've just put a lot of time into it man yeah. like, to, I, I'm, to be clear i wasn't saying i'm concerned i'm saying like i i just can't believe like i in, in, in a way that like that they it seemed to have done it until we actually play through we won't know but like I'm shocked. Like this looks like an insane experience that's gonna last forever. Yeah. So. Oh yeah, and they they're going a lot for replayability too, which is crazy to me, right? That this game is probably gonna be what a hundred hours long, uh, maybe two hundred hours long, which is as long as The Witcher Three. And they really emphasize my playthrough that yeah, the different life paths are gonna play differently. You're gonna have different experiences with them, and we 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 want to make it in a in a way where you are replaying your game and having an entirely different experience because along with the life paths, right, you have different different ways you can spec out your character. You have the different uh, skill trees. You have different abilities you can you can uh, acquire. Like, there's, there, there's so much depth in terms of choosing how you want to play and choosing how you want to live in the world. And that to me, that's, that's to me the thing that blows my mind is like there's so much 
like meat in here to like grapple with. And so <laughs> Can't Can't wait, wait, I, meat. <laughs> I need to <laughs> Google because I, I remember this being a conversation before. It's actually gonna be shorter than The Witcher, right? Wasn't that their whole thing and why they want replayability? I'm looking at uh Gfinity esports.com, which is the first result I got. It turns out that CD Projekt Red has yet to me- measure that, but have claimed that Cyberpunk 2077 won't take as long to complete as The Witcher 3, taking somewhere between 50 and 60 hours. Okay, that makes sense. I think sense. they want you to replay and do different stuff. And that actually excites me way more. Because, oh, totally. Like, yeah. Like not, not being long. this everlasting gobstopper of content that you can never feel like you're getting done with. I'd rather it be an open world, make a bunch of different choices, see the ending, and then if you want to, run it again. Yeah. Yeah. Exciting stuff. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we will return for many more live reactions to all of the latest and greatest in video games right here on twitch.tv slash kind of funny games and youtube.com slash kind of funny games. Uh, Bless and I will be doing kind of funny games daily if you're watching live in about 25 minutes. So stay tuned for that. Until next time, love you guys. Bye. Hey everybody. Love you.